Hello everyone. Google Forms is a great way to create quizzes that automatically grade themselves to save you time and energy grading papers. Now, it's not the perfect tool for all types of quizzes and questions, but if we're honest about it, there are not a whole lot of tools out there that are totally perfect for everything that you want to do. They can all be improved in some way. This video is going to highlight my best practices for quizzes using Google Forms. I think you'll find it real useful even if you've been using Google Forms to give students quizzes that automatically grade themselves already. Now, if you're a beginner and you want to know about the whole process of creating quizzes that automatically grade themselves in Google Forms from scratch, I've got another video for you listed in the description below. So check it out or check out the Google Forms playlist I've created. Well, alrighty then, let's go. Everything that we're going to cover here is going to make the process of reading the data from the questions on the back end of the Google Form much easier and more efficient. First things first, you create your quiz Please make sure that all of the questions are required by switching required on in the bottom right corner. There's a setting in Google Forms that allows you to automatically collect the email addresses of the persons taking the quiz, but I still like to have students type in their name, preferably with their first name and their last name as separate questions. That way I can filter out those things on the back end. If you have a colleague who also teaches the same subject, both of you can share a Google form by clicking on adding a collaborator. This way, both of you can contribute questions to a quiz at the same time. For instance, if you're doing a 10 question quiz, then you can create five questions and your colleague create five questions, then give the same Google form as a quiz to all of your students in both sets of classes. Since you have a question listed to ask for the teacher's name and class period, you'll be able to filter out the responses for the appropriate classes on the back end in the spreadsheet. Not only does this lighten both of your workloads, but now you'll be able to compare how well students did after teaching the same concept. Another one of my best practice is to insert a new section. This separates the beginning of the quiz that collects the personal information and gives you a new section that begins the actual questions of the test. Now, some teachers like this as well because it also does not allow the students to see the questions as soon as they get to the form. The next section is where you can begin the questions. Make sure that for all of the questions that are multiple choice, checkbox and drop down that you shuffle the option order by clicking on the three dots in the lower right hand corner of the question and selecting shuffle option order. Now I could click the plus button to insert a new question but then I would have to make sure that I turn on required again and shuffle option order for each new question. Rather than hitting the plus button to insert a new question, you can click on the duplicate icon to create a new question so that it already has all of the same required settings. You can then make whatever edits to the question that are needed. Another really great feature in Google Forms as a quiz is the ability to provide instant feedback to students. At the bottom right of each question, there's the word answer key. Once we click on answer key, we'll then go into the answer key mode of the question. While in answer key mode, we have the ability to give the point value of the question and add answer feedback. When we clicked on answer feedback, we have the ability to give feedback for both incorrect answers and a separate feedback for correct answers. This can be a really good opportunity for clarification and remediation if a student has gotten the question wrong. However, please note that the students will see this feedback once they submit the quiz. 
Now, depending on whether you want them to know if they got the question wrong or right will determine what you put here. A safe bet is to either put no feedback or put the same feedback for both correct and incorrect answers. Something maybe that explains how to do the problem correctly. You can also add in a hyperlink or a YouTube video and click save. After you create your questions, you can then click on the settings button. Once the menu pops up, you'll need to definitely check the boxes to limit to one response and restrict to your user organization. You can also check the box to collect email address if you like. We'll skip over and click on quizzes to make sure that the boxes to see missed questions and correct answers are unchecked. We also want to make sure that the grade is released immediately after submission. That way, they don't have to wait and ask you about what's their grade? Mister, what did I make? The last thing I want to show you is under the presentation. Now, this is extremely important. Make sure that the box for submitting another response is unchecked and the box to shuffle question order is checked. Since you already have the answers in the questions being shuffled, this will allow you to shuffle the questions as well so that each time someone goes to the quiz, no one gets the same version of the test. If you like that good tip, type I like this in the comments section below. Now, keep in mind that the questions are only shuffled within the section where they're located. Since, in, since we inserted a new section after we collected their personal information, the items located there will remain. But all questions, even in the information section, at the beginning will also be scrambled. But we don't mind that. That'll just help keep them on their toes. Many people miss a great opportunity here in the confirmation message. The standard message when you create the quiz is, your response has been recorded. And most people just leave that there. I'm not sure if you have students like this, but you know, sometimes I would have these early finishers and, you know, once they're done, they could get off task and even become a bit of a distraction for other students who are still taking their test. The confirmation message is where you can give them next steps. Whether they need to go to a book or go to a link or back to the Google Classroom for their next assignment, you really need to use the confirmation message to continue engaging students and moving the lesson forward. If you like that good tip, type great good tip in the comment section. Once we have finished our new confirmation message, we click the save button and we're ready to go. Please always take the quiz yourself one time just to make sure that everything works the way that you want it to. As you can see here, when I clicked on the preview, it has shuffled the information section of the quiz. After I complete this information, I'll click next and fill in the answers. I'll select a couple of incorrect answers or two just to, just for an example. And once I click the submit button, it then allows the student to get next steps and view their score. Now, when they view their score, it also gives them the opportunity to see the questions as well. But that's also why we uncheck the boxes to see the missed and correct answers. That's also why we either give no feedback or the same feedback for correct or incorrect answers. Unless you want them to know which questions they got wrong or right immediately, then you may want to consider doing something else. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a comment below and share it with a colleague or on social media. Let me know if there's something you'd like me to cover and I'll make a video for that as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the little bell to get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh, I almost forgot. 
I've got a freebie for you. Google Classroom has recently been updated. If you go to the website wileyb.me slash new classroom guide, you can download a guidebook that I put together for you that covers how to navigate all of the new updates in the new Google Classroom. Again, just go to wileyb.me slash new classroom guide. Thank you.